What is good everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today we're back with brand new AEW action figure news. As you guys know, SDCC San Diego Comic Con is coming next week. We are just days away from finding out what we're going to be getting from WWE Mattel. Apparently we are going to be getting an AEW figure exclusive for San Diego Comic Con. Jeremy Padawa did post it on the Turnbuckle Tavern in his interview. He said there was going to be an AEW figure exclusive. I haven't heard anything or seen anything about it, but apparently that is the case. So we will have to see about that. But today, man, we do have some brand new AEW action figure images of AEW Unrivaled Series 10 featuring the entire wave, including both chase figures, which I'm excited to get into with you. We're going to cover it all here, and I would love to know down in the comment section below if you enjoy these figures, do you like them, all those different things, man. Let me know down in the comment section below, but let's dive into AEW Series 10 and break down these images and cover it all here on the channel. So our first figure that we're looking at, man, is going to be Britt Baker. You guys know that Britt Baker is no stranger to the AEW Unrivaled line or the AEW action figure line whatsoever. She's going to be coming with her women's championship. This is, uh, I, I feel like we get Britt Baker a lot, right? You had the Unmatched Series 1. You had the Unmatched Series 1 Chase. You had the Blood and Guts figure. You have the Supreme figure coming. Then she's in this line. She's also the Chase in this line, which we'll also get into at the end of the wave. But I like this head sculpt a lot. I think it looks a hell of a lot better than her first figure. I actually enjoy this figure a lot. I'm worried that, you know, like the first of all, the pegs are pretty ugly here. I I like the gear choice that they went with, but it looks to be like pretty much the same figure with a new head sculpt, you know, and that, that's kind of where we are here, which I think it does look good. I think it looks like Britt Baker. I enjoy the head sculpt and stuff, but I think, let's be honest with with ourselves that the Supreme Collection is going to dunk on every single one of her unrivaled figures, so that's kind of what we have to just get over and build a bridge, but this, this Britt Baker is looking pretty good. I, I enjoy the figure, but let's move on to the next figure, which is going to be Taz, and this Taz figure is a bit plain Jane, man. I'm going to be honest with you here. I love the legs. You guys know that the Cody Rhodes figure from Unmatched Series 4 was my favorite figure in the set. It's the promo street gears. All the promo street attires that we get from AEW, I'm all aboard. I think they're amazing. This head sculpt is pretty solid. I think it does look like Taz. You know, it is just a blank expression, but it does look like him. It really does. He's got his black leather jacket on there. I don't know what it looks like underneath the jacket. I'm not sure if it's a short sleeve shirt or a long sleeve shirt. I imagine it'd be a long sleeve shirt, and we'll have to see, you know, what kind of fix-ups we can do. If maybe we could put other people in this gear, what other bodies look like on these legs, but it's a very plain Jane figure. I could see this guy uh, po potentially show for me. Not a lot of people wanting it. I'm going to base that on my review. If I think it has enough switch and interchangeability, I will be purchasing multiple, especially at retail because they're going to be very widely available, but I like the articulation on the legs. You have sort of these like brown jogger pants here, which isn't the most aesthetically pleasing, but he's got his sneakers on there. He looks pretty good. You know, it's plain Jane. It's really plain Jane. I think a wrestling gear Taz would have sold better, but at the same time, I think this allows for a lot of different things that you can do with it in the backstage area and stuff. He comes with a microphone, kind of a plain Jane figure, but uh, I actually am looking forward to this one. I think it's going to be okay once we get it in hand. We'll have to see about that. The next figure is Andrade, man. Look at this figure right here. I remember when we first saw this figure. Now, I do have a little bit of gripes, which we'll get into, but I love the pinstripe pants, man. The, the, the New York Yankee pinstripe pants are are sick as hell. I love it. I, I, I absolutely love these pants. I want to put everybody in pinstripe pants. You know what I mean? But this looks good. I like how his foot mold is the boots that he wears. Those are his wrestling boots. The flat style without, you know, the laces and stuff like that. That is the legit boots that Andrade has worn for years, even in WWE. So that's a really nice attention to detail. I like the head sculpt. I think it does look like Andrade. I think if you hate the head sculpt, you could probably just put the Mattel one on there. Even though the skin tone is a bit fair, I think it is accurate. I think this is the kind of skin tone that we wanted out of our Dominic Mysterio and our Eddie Guerreros. You know what I mean? I think that they did a good job here of capturing that skin tone, but the likeness to Andrade is there. I like the masked head sculpt except for the eyes. I feel like it looks a bit weird around the eyes, at least in these images. You do get your gloved hands and you do get his entrance jacket, but it is rubber, which is kind of garb. I think if it's on display, it won't really matter, but you know, it's it's pretty garb. I think in full, full get up, it looks okay, but he's also missing Missing the black undershirt, which kind of, you know, completes the look, in my opinion. He kind of looks like the magician on the show where, you know, he exposes all the magician's secrets. That's what this guy looks like when he has his mask on here, and the eyes look a bit weird, how they're wide-eyed. But I am loving the pinstripe pants. I can't wait to get that in hand again because I think, again, interchangeability is going to be insane. You could possibly acetone all the pinstripes off and have, like, white slacks. I mean, ah, oh, dude, just plenty of stuff that we could get into, and hopefully that will be the case. But Andrade looks good. I'm really hyped for the Andrade figure. Can't wait to get 
it in hand. I think it's going to pose around with the best of them, and we'll have to see about that. But I'm excited for this, this Andrade figure. If we move on, we do have Miro. Now, the first thing you're going to notice about this Miro is that head sculpt. What in the hell is this again? Another head sculpt for Miro that is laughable. It is another weird-looking head sculpt. I think this one's better than his first go-around, but uh, he comes with a black strap TNT title. I feel like I've seen that title like 8 million times already. It's like the WWE title back in like 2017 or whatever it was when it was like every figure was coming with that title, but... Right here, it, I love the gear. I think this Miro is a lot better than his first go-around. I think, it. I don't know if this is true, but it looks to me like this figure's taller than his last one. Like, the kick pad's maybe a different mold. Like, they made him a little bit taller here to adjust for how short his last figure is, trying to capture how big Rusev is or how big Miro is. So maybe that will be the case. But I plan on taking this figure, mixing and matching it with his old figure, maybe getting, you know, a, a nice fix-up going. But the good thing about this figure is that he comes with an interchangeable pistol off head sculpt that I think looks so much better than the other two head sculpts we've seen so far from Miro. So I'm excited for this one just simply for the attire and simply for the other things that we can do with it. Maybe you could acetone the TNT champion logos off to have a, re a solid red gear Miro. But I, I like the figure. I do like the figure. I'm excited to see what we get out of it. And I swear to God. Oh yeah, chest hair. Where the hell's the chest hair? We gotta have chest hair here. Maybe a fix-up option on action figure surgery. So there's plenty of things we'll be able to do on surgery with this wave it seems like. So that'll be fun to do, but uh, yeah, Miro's looking good. I like the figure a lot, but that one head sculpt is looking a bit odd. I think I'm definitely going to put the pissed off head sculpt on it, but moving on, we also have Jake Hager, his second figure we've ever seen, and I like this head sculpt a lot, and you get two different ones. You get a straight pissed off one, and then you get a yelling, and both of these look so much better than his first go round in Unrivaled Series 6. He's got sculpted on black wrist tape. He's got his hand tape. Again, he's got the long black pants on. If you want to do fix-ups with this. You're going to have bigger legs and bodies now to put other guys in the black pants. So, you don't have to leave them in the jumpsuit. Of course, you could put another guy's head on here to put him in jumpsuit. You might get away with Wardlow or something like that. But if you switch to torso, you could put another guy in, you know, the long black pants, maybe even switch the shoes. But this figure looks phenomenal. I know it's kind of a one-off. I don't know how sought after the figure will be, but it looks like great parts, great pieces and fodder for potential other fix-ups. This wave is perfect for fix-ups, I think, with all the different pants options that you're getting. So this excites me. I love how they're doing their pants legs super articulated. If the Hangman and the Cody are any, you know, example for the rest of the wave and how these pants are going to be molded, I can see the lower shin cut on these again. I, that just makes me super happy. So that, that, that is uh, making the world go around. I'm really happy for this so far. So we'll have to see what comes of it. But the next figure in the set is my man Wardlow. Good God in heaven. The white gear with the purple camo. This is clean as hell. You guys know I'm a big Wardlow guy. Love Wardlow. You put him in some white gear from the freaking Blood and Guts match. I'm all over it, man. I am absolutely all over this one. This is probably a no Wardlow left behind. I love this. I, I just adore it. It looks beautiful. I can't wait for our Wardlow Supreme Edition in the future, ba maybe. But this looks insane. I like how they have the tape on the back of the leg for the accuracy. It, I don't think it was necessary, but, you know, it's a cool little detail right there. But Wardlow looks incredible here. You get your interchangeable head sculpts. It's basically a repaint of his series, too, but this gear is much, much better, I'd say, than his first figure. So I'm excited for Wardlow. I love it. I cannot wait to get my hands on it and, get, you know, get a review in here. I think it's going to be uh, a beautiful figure once it's in hand. I like the first go around. I like this one. So this will be really great. And then, of course, we do have the Chase figures in the set. And the first Chase is going to be the one of 3,000 Taz. Now, this is where people were like, what the blue hell is that, Brad? So basically, with the Chase Taz, you get gray pants, a hat, and you get a new pissed off yelling head sculpt for Taz. So you don't get a, I think they should have included the screaming head with the regular version also, but they did not. So that's kind of bummerific, but the Taz figure is what it is. You know, it's a very plain chase. It's one of the most plain chases. Not a lot of stuff going on with it. I imagine that this Taz is not going to be very sought after. I feel like it'll be one of those chases that dips down in value drastically. Of course, I could be wrong about that. I just, I, I don't know, man. I do not see it. You just have gray pants, a hat, and a new head sculpt. And on top of that, the regular version isn't that isn't going to be that sought after, I don't think. I could be wrong about that. You guys can let me know down in the comment section below. But this Chase figure of one of 3,000 is not my favorite. 
and I'm not the biggest fan of that. And you guys can let me know what you think of that down in the comment section below. But there is Taz's chase, and then you knew, you knew it had to be true, Brad. The other chase in this set is Britt Baker. Britt Baker is the one of 5,000. Now, one thing about this is it's actually a really good looking gear. I like the red. I like the silver. I like her boots, the white and black. They look really, really good. I like the knee sleeves. This is pretty sweet, you know. I just think that Britt Baker's figures feel really weird in hand. I'm hoping that they make that change with the tummy cut. I, I can't stand the stomach cut that they put on these women's figures. Really aesthetically unpleasing to the eye. I think that it's an eyesore. It goes right in the middle of the figure, and uh, it doesn't help their articulation whatsoever. I think they could really get a better ab bend and cut if they were to change that up, but the figure does look good. You know, I don't know if you guys are liking the black and red over the red and silver. I think I like the chase better than the, you know, the regular version in the black and red with the, uh, you know, kind of the Wolfpack NWO style going on, but, I, you know, I like it. It's not, it's not terrible. You know, I'll, I'll build a bridge and get over it there, but that is our full AEW Unrivaled Series 10 wave, man. I would love to know down in the comment section below what you guys think of this full wave. I don't think it's like uh, just an absolute massacre of a set, but I think it it's a pretty good set. I think at the end of the day when we get them all in here, it's going to be really good. You do have a lot of repeats. You know, Taz is first time in the line. Andrade is first time in the line. A repaint of Miro, a repaint of Britt Baker, a repaint of Wardlow, and then a re... Uh, not a repaint of Jake Hager, but it is a, a new Jake Hager there. So, you know, you, you get some decent stuff here, but I think at the end of the day, I'm looking forward to the wave. I love the AEW figure line, so I am looking forward to all of these, and we'll have to wait until we get them in hand for the reviews. But I imagine these are going to be coming soon, as well as the Ringside exclusive JR, because Ringside posted their review of JR, and we have these images out now, so I'd imagine that these are going to be coming within the next couple weeks or so. So, lots of stuff coming. We, we, we have plenty of things coming soon to the channel with the JR Unrivaled 10. You have San Diego Comic-Con next week. I actually have some other reviews coming soon as well of some figures that are late to my door. So I have to see about that. But I'm getting the hell out of here, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Before we get out of here, let's get into our random shout-out. And this random shout-out is going to go to a cluck or A-C-C-L-U-K. He says, I love your stuff, man. A lot of guys stop all their stuff, but you keep on going. Thanks for that. And I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much for the kind words. You know, I don't I don't plan on going out anywhere anytime soon, you know, at least to, to end my brain. You know, I enjoy what I do. I love the channel. I love you guys. You guys are absolutely incredible. I love this this hobby. I love what we've created here. I love to share the love of the hobby and the community. So I'm all aboard, man. I'm right here with you. And I'm always here to discuss these things, man. But I'm getting the hell out of here. Thank you guys for watching. Huge shout out for the huge shout out to a cluck for the comment. I'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed day. Cannot wait for San Diego Comic Con. <laughs>